Okay, I think we're recording. Hello, everybody. This is Lori uh, of the Magpie Eye Art Studios. And today, I am going to be covering these four paintings here with resin, epoxy resin. And so I just wanted to do a video on how I do my uh, resin coatings for my acrylic paintings. So I have four paintings here. And what I've done, in order to determine how much epoxy you will need, there is a formula, and I wrote it down somewhere. Here it is. Okay. So hopefully you can see this. Um, get my glasses on. What we have here is, um, well, it looks like a lot, but I'll break it down for you. Basically, what you're gonna do is you are going to, whether it's a single picture or multiple pictures, you're going to measure the length by the width, and it's typically in inches. So 16, which this one here is a 16 by 20. So I multiplied 16 by 20, which told me I had 320 square inches for that painting. Now the resin that I use, East Coast resins, is a ratio of one to one. So it's one part hardener and one part epoxy resin. The way I determine how much resin to mix up is it takes approximately three ounces, and that's a total, so 50% resin, 50% harder hardener, uh, to cover a 10 by 10 canvas. Now, if you, I always mix a little extra, uh, depending on how deep the picture could be. Sometimes I work with the uh, ultra deep, you know, two, three inch uh, deep canvases. These are all the um, thinner in depth. Anyway, um, so yeah, basically, I if I'm gonna do a multiple coating in one fell swoop, uh, mind you, I never mix more than a quarter gallon of resin and hardener at the same time because one, it's very difficult to stir and depending on the weather conditions, it will, fla or it will start to cure or flash and become very difficult to work with. So this is about the biggest that I'll do and I have a total, I added up all of my pictures here, sorry. So what I have is a 16 by 20 canvas, which is 320 square inches, and I have a 14 by 14, 196 square inches. I have two 16 by 12 canvases. That's just our adorable little Buffy. She's a toy Yorkie. And, um, hello, Giskadooey. So, as you can see, I have the square inches here. And based on the formula of three ounces approximately of epoxy resin per 100 square inches, I've come up with 11 ounces for the 16 by 20, um, seven ounces for the 14 by 40, and seven ounces each for the 16 by 12. Again, that's 50% resin. 50% of the catalyst or the hardener. Um, for my friends on the metric system in Europe, just so you know, one inch equals 2.54 centimeters. So I would multiply the length and width in centimeters. For instance, a 16 by 20 in centimeters is 40 by 64 centimeters times 50 by eight centimeters, giving you this total of 2,064.5 
blah, blah, one, two centimeters. And that is a total in U.S. fluid ounces of 32 fluid ounces or in metric or milliliters, it would be the 325.31, again, 50-50. And all of these results represent a combined total of the 50% hardener and 50% resin. So just keep that in mind and always, I always would rather have a little bit extra than not have enough because then you really run into some problems. All right, so the first thing I do when I'm getting ready to coat my resin is I prep once I've done my, my painting and I allow it to thoroughly, thoroughly dry. Um, between three, four days, all the way up to two weeks. It just depends, um, again, weather conditions, climate in the room it's curing in, and so on and so forth. Um, but once it is thoroughly dry, I then take a mixture of a baby powder, which I then add about a quarter of cornstarch, just regular cornstarch from the supermarket, um, to the mixture. I spread it all over. I take a rather wide brush and I start to really work the powder into the painting because you can't see it but you can certainly feel where the paint has divoted or left recesses or pockets if you will um, that contain dust or residual oils, whatever you work with, be it silicone or dimethicone or any of those. And all of those oils will act as a dispersant when you apply your resin. Uh, been there, done that, and I've got the t-shirt to prove it. So I will take the painting, really work the powder in really good, clean the powder off, and then I will do it again. Um, until I can turn it and see that I don't have any oily residue visible to my eye. But that's not where I stop. I then take a lint-free cloth that I put some rubbing alcohol on and I gently wipe the surface, paying extra attention to the small pockets and divots in the individual paintings um, because we don't want any of the baby powder left there either. Uh, at the same time, I frequently check the cloth to make sure that I'm not actually removing any paint from the painting while doing the rubbing. Uh, it's a gentle rub, but you need to make sure that your painting truly is free of dust and uh, residual oils or just anything that could really um, react with the epoxy. You want ultimately that super high gloss, even sheen. Um, it's just, it's so beautiful. It makes the colors pop and I love working with resin. So, um, yes. Now, what we're going to talk about is gloves because I wear gloves. I wear multiple sets of gloves actually because sometimes uh, when I find that I'm in the thick of it, I will need to just peel off that instead of cleaning my hands with the alcohol wipes. So I do use, I have paper towels and rubbing alcohol at the ready. Before epoxy has fully cured, uh, 91 proof alcohol will take it right off of not only your gloves, your skin. Um, it's just amazing. Uh, it works really well with epoxy and then I also always cover my workspace in wax paper because it will the epoxy will not stick to wax paper it actually just kind of falls right on off when you're when it's dry okay so we've talked about prepping the artwork and um, at this point what we're gonna do is we are going to talk about mixing the resin and the epoxy. All right, so here I have my two cups, which I have pre-measured 
of my resin and my hardener, okay? Be extremely careful and thoughtful and just get the measurement exactly right, if you can at all, because I have been sloppy with my measurements at times and the epoxy will not cure. You'll end up with sticky spots, tacky spots, and it just, it's really sad when you see something that you really like that you've done or a commission that you've done and then your epoxy doesn't set and it, it, it becomes a nightmare. So I've carefully measured. I'm going to use a plastic container. I pour my B first and I do mark my containers here because I can use them again. As long as they haven't mixed together, they will clean right up with just a, a dry paper towel. So this is B for hardener and A is marked here, which you can't see underneath for the resin. I pour in the B first. It is the thinner of the liquids. Now at this point, you are welcome to take your stick and scrape. Get as much of it out as you can. You want to get the same amount out of this that you do out of the other one. So it's kind of like a repeat. Like the second verse, same as the first. So I'm gonna get it really scraped out. And there went some box there. There went some hardener on the picture. Um, I'll get that off and I think that's about as good as it's gonna come out for me for right now which is fine now when you mix your epoxy let me just take a second and wipe off the epoxy that I just I think a drop went on my yes it did right there so I just take a little alcohol and wipe that off and again we don't want anything wrecking you know what i better really make sure okay we're gonna move this like this just because i don't trust myself okay so now we're gonna add a and this is where once a and b meet in the cup and start to get mixed you are already, the, it's already starting to cure or flash, which means that you only have so much time after that point to get your work done. So I encourage you to work quickly and to start off with small projects, maybe not four at one time, maybe one. And um, yeah, there you go. That's just my best advice because I have done this where I, have, I had mixed too much, thought I could handle it, bit off more than I could chew, and half my epoxy cured in my container and was I was unable to use it. So we are now going to get a different stick here, and we're gonna scrape this one out. We are now mixing, and at this point, we are now in go time. So what that means, we're gonna get it on in there quickly and mixing is incredibly important. If it is not mixed thoroughly, it will not set or cure properly, which is a nightmare. I'm here to tell you, just unbelievable. So with that being said, I'm not gonna stick that back in there, it'll ruin my thing. Um, there's a ton left in there, I'll use my, my cake spatula here. So um, yeah. I am going to do this as quickly as possible because this is incredibly important. And what I'm gonna show you is that when you put the two parts together, what you're gonna see in your cup is going to be, and you start to mix, okay, boop. So we'll just take these two together and we'll make them our mixers. now. I don't know if you can see that, but what happens is when you mix it, it becomes very cloudy. That is uh, 
the two components mixing together. You will stir for a minimum of three minutes. Let me get this out of the way, thank you. So I don't know if you can see that, I hope you can, but this is what not properly mixed epoxy looks like. It is quite cloudy and well, you'll know when you see it. So I don't lift my sticks out of the container. One of the things I learned a long time ago about mixing without it kind of swirling right out of the cup is to really just go back and forth like this, believe it or not, even with coffee. If you are putting cream or sugar in your coffee and you just mix your spoon back and forth like this, as if you were, you know, making them um, just straight lines across, you will not have, for the most part, any of it slosh out. When you go round and round and round is when you get that swirling motion and then the epoxy comes out over the side of the lip. So I do this and I'm careful to make sure that I'm scraping the side because as you remember when I was first introducing the A component resin to the B component hardener, I had scraped the stick off the side. So I like to use these kind of malleable containers that I can get to um, bend to my will. No, just kidding, bend to my stir stick. Okay, so at this point I am gonna start to stir like this, but if you've noticed I haven't raised my stick out of the cup. To do so, I have found, ooh, and you get tired doing this, introduces more air bubbles than if you just leave the stick where it's at. Now I'm already starting to get some clarity here, but it's gonna be a little while, so tell you what, let's just really rock and roll. And if you look at it through light, and you put it through light, you can see all of the swirls that are still down in there, making sure also that you scrape along the sides of the bottom if your container has you know, a crevice, a channel. Ideally, it should be flat bottomed, but this one had a little channel, so I'm gonna have to pay extra attention to that. But I am starting to get clear to the point where I can just start to give it the old swirl. I'm comfortable now that I won't throw it over the lip. And again, I'm gonna scrape to see how much of that Haze I can bring up, and there I just pick some more up. So we're gonna go back and forth. Oh, I'll tell you what, this is a workout for me. So my studio, the Magpie Eye Art Studio here in Alexander, North Carolina, uh, we just started manufacturing our own line of art supplies. We're very excited about that. And I'm hoping to show you in my next video uh, resin, working with resin and my um, alcohol, alcohol inks by Magpie. I'm, I'm the Magpie, yeah. All right, we're looking really good, but I need to get this over here really quick and just stand up and really be sure. Nope, not ready. Now, when we get ready to pour these, you're going to need, I use a butane torch like this, and it will help the bubbles pop so that you get that nice, even surface that we all want when we coat with resin. Yay. Come on, you guys. Cooperate. Every time I scrape the sides, I'm getting more swirls of that that misty, foggy look, which means it is not mixed. So we are gonna keep it up. All right, I can see much, and I can see through it, and I am going to call it 
done. All right, now we're ready for the pour. Again, cover your work surface. This looks like it's lost some. So we're gonna put that there. Bring this little pretty girl over here. And I've got something on this one again. Individual epoxies have different, you know, work, uh, they're called open times or your work time. The time that you are kind of given based on the chemistry of that particular manufacturer's um, product, it's the open work time. Now, ooh, I pulled some paint off of that. Hello. Woo woo. All right, we're gonna pour that one, not right now. We're gonna let that dry. 91% alcohol dries pretty quick though. Um, make sure this is on the table. This is on the table. Oh boy. I do not want this getting on my kitchen table. I would be doing this out in my studio, but it's really hot here in Western North Carolina these last couple days. So hot, in fact, that even with an air conditioning unit in my window of my studio, it's almost impossible to breathe out there. I don't know if that's because of Florence, the hurricane that came through or what, but all right, here we go. So first pour. Oh, and when you pour, never scrape the sides to get everything out or the bottom. You just want to pour what's in there and leave the rest stuck to the sides because that's where you're going to find your epoxy that hasn't been mixed well um, the most. That's where it's going to hang out is on the sides and on the bottom. So with that being said, we are going to use this stick that I was just using and do some spreading. I'm just going to spread around and you know I actually like to use my hands for this since I have gloves on I can get the sides really well but I did want to show you that this works as well. Um, I'm probably going to switch to my hands in any second now. When I do multiple pours like this I tend to use my hands spread it around, make sure the sides get nice and covered, and let the excess fall off onto one of the pieces that I'm getting ready to epoxy. And have I made messes? Yes. But it's nice to use all the product every time you can. It doesn't happen every time, but it certainly doesn't hurt to get that canvas going. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, I always tape the sides of my picture, uh, underneath I tape so that the epoxy doesn't go underneath. I've had pictures that when the epoxy cured, there were really sharp points that I had to go in. It was just an extra step that I wasn't excited about, which was sanding down epoxy and re-resining. Not my favorite thing to do. So. What we have here is looking good. I take my torch, work as quickly as I possibly can. Bubbles will continue to rise. So I'm just gonna knock out the few quickly that are immediately uh, seen by me. And don't forget the sides. And that will do it for that. And then we are going to move on to the next one. All right, next one. I'm gonna go around the table here. Well, let's just do this one since it has epoxy on it. And voila, we are going to do this one. I'm just gonna use my hands again. It's just so much easier for me. Get the sides really good. that moving before we have any curing of the material. Temperature is pretty important. They say that the ideal temperature to work with epoxy is, uh, don't quote me, but somewhere between 70 and 75. I'd have to look 
at my notes to be specific and if you have any questions about that um, just leave a comment I respond to all my comments so we're going on to the next one okay this one's actually going smooth so far trust me I have a lot to dump all right get the sides nicely okay make sure those sides get covered yeah and set it down whoops need some right there and voila as they say in French okay and lastly this special gal here I love this painting it just took my breath away when I turned it over and this is what came out I was like yay one for the hundred that I failed at love it there is no failing in art there's only try and try and try again until you get it right and even then you can still get it wrong and it's so funny because some of the pieces that I swore I told my husband this will never ever sell immediately sold so it's such a relative thing you know art is such a subjective thing and it's all relative to the eye beauty is in the eye of the beholder I have learned that 1000% okay we are going to this is where having multiple layers of gloves comes in handy and I have a ton of epoxy left so my little uh, extra that I threw in really wasn't necessary um, let's give it a torch and see what happens oh we're gonna need some more over here all righty here and I just am going to let the epoxy and the painting do the work. I'm just going to let it dry while I navigate, if you will. No, I'm sorry. I'm going to drive. The painting's going to navigate. That's my saying. Okay. That's beautiful. All right. Yes. Handy little torches. Oh, where is it? Okay, that was a bubble. Good. Now, I can see some smoke coming off, so I'm going to stop for a second because I do not want to burn my work, which maybe I did there. Oh, don't do that, Lori. We're going to go ahead and pour some more on here. Just let it work its way out. Self-leveling. So, I can use all of this and again not scraping the sides not scraping the bottom that is a done deal on that canister and maybe just do a little tipping so that i can get some even coverage with the additional epoxy that i put on there oh yeah that's going to be lovely Wee. Ooh, lovely. And I'm trying not to touch the sides because I want them evenly coated as well. Looks good. Looks really good. Okay. I just hold it over the other paintings. And voila. And pull off one of these. popping air bubbles and I will walk away and come back and find more bubbles you know what I forgot I gotta tilt this one hold on a second oh yeah looking good looking good oops don't want to touch the sides come on baby and all the way to the 
corner and woo, work it around the other side. I feel like I'm in an ideal temperature right now because it's just really has a lot of movement and doing well. It is doing what it's supposed to do. Almost to the edge and we're there. Now we are going to torch. I'm going to need more gloves. I do go through a lot of gloves, Poxy. I'm probably all in the way of the camera, I apologize. I've got to really get in there to see the bubbles. And again, here they are popping up here. More bubbles, more bubbles. And I have a spot here that's being stubborn. Please don't do that. Thank you. Bubble, 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 bubble. That is not a bubble. That is something that needs to be pulled out. So, let me get my handy dandy tweezers out. And my gloves are where? Excuse me for just a minute, guys. I have it right here. Ah, perfect. All right. Now I will get my tweezers. And we are going to continue getting the bubbles out until it's ready to go into the curing cabinet. All right. All right. All right, we're going to move on to this pending over here. Get these. Sometimes if you get a difficult bubble, you can poke at it. That's not a bubble. Okay, that's the problem. What is that? Hello. All right, goodbye. I hope I don't play this back and see that I basically covered the entire video with the back of my head. That would not be good. Ah. Anyway, what I was saying is you can poke at it like that. If you see a bubble and it's being obstinate, it will eventually rise to the surface. Sometimes it's too late though to get it. Um, what in the world is that? Boy, there we go. This is terrible. It's covered with stuff. Yuck. Okay, let's get over to this one. It's had no attention whatsoever. Hello, pretty girl. How are you today? Oh, she says she's wonderful. She loves her gold. All her gold. Uh oh. We've got a spot in need of some love right here. Mm -mm. Okay, good. Thank you. And yes, I talked to my... Oh, that wasn't good. That was very, very not good. So, yes, I talked to my paintings. I'm so sorry. I just took and did a boo-boo. I used the heat too close to it. It's still able to be fixed, though, because it is in a nice... It's not cured. That's all I can say there. It is not cured. So, do I have 
have any of those? Yep, I sure do have more. Right here. You gotta get down and look at it from an angle a lot to really be able to see where you've missed. And that was a big miss. Okay. There we are. All right. I'm gonna keep my torch a little higher for some reason. There seem to be having a few accidents here. But nothing that's like not fixable or not, or that is gonna be detrimental to the end result. Oh Lordy, what is this? Come here, are you still working for me? Yay, you are, because I need you. Let's see, where did I see that? There it is. Boom. This edge is not entirely doing what it's supposed to do. Okay, good. And uh, you go there. And we'll let that kind of level out. Okay, moving on to this picture here. Hi. And how are you today? Oh, you're so beautiful. Look at all your gold. Looks like you went shopping. This one, I must have just cleaned this one perfectly because it doesn't have a mar on it. Nothing. I'm going to wait for those bubbles to rise. Continue to pop them as they do. And give myself a Nice side view here of everything. Okay. Let me have a little hair here. And that one over there is looking good. And that one over there is looking fantastic, except for I see something. What are you? Are you a bubble? Are you bubble trouble or are you a hair or something weird in my painting? You, I don't know what you are, but whatever it is, you're gone. So you must have been bubble. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to let the painting sit for a while, maybe three to five minutes, come back, retorch, and then at that time, I will very carefully transfer them to a curing cabinet that is covered and let them set. Uh, go back and check on them, make sure that everything's going as planned. But probably not for the first four to five hours. I don't even want to lift the lid because then you run the risk of kind of sucking in dust, like little dust motes. These little things that are everywhere and you can't help it. It's not that your house is dirty, ooh, there's a big hair, or anything like that. It just, it is what it is. Little sun dust motes dancing along on sunbeams are epoxy's worst enemy. All right. And they're everywhere and they can't be helped. I don't care how clean your house is. Trust me, we try around here. Why are you still there? What are you? I do not know. Bizarre. Okay, apparently you're nothing, but I see you. All right, again, sides. Sides, sides, sides. Boom, boom, boom. And sides. Ooh, this one's really got some bubbles coming up. All right. Back to my big piece here. Let's see what's going on over here. Oh, yeah. Lots of bubbles came up while I was away. I'm going to sit down, check the sides, and just give it a good once over. And then, let 
The one thing I forgot to mention about epoxy, hmm, not using my thinking cap. As it drains and drips off of the board covering the sides, you will oftentimes get large amounts of drips hanging out underneath the painting, which isn't a problem if you've taped it. But here's what it does do. It pulls the epoxy that's on the picture as it's dripping, it acts as a, a pulley of sorts. I don't really know how to explain it, but it just, it literally will continue to drain if you have a lot of this going on underneath the painting. So, I take the time to kind of wipe it off because I don't want, I mean, I guess because I want the epoxy to do what I want it to do. And there's no surprise there. And it will, but sometimes it has to be told or helped along in order to facilitate that that painting um, having an, the optimal uh, conditions to just turn out wonderful and amazing and your clients are so happy and you're so happy and everybody's happy. There we go. I pulled off quite a bit on that one. And, oh yeah, hold on now. There's a ton here. We are going to skate through here gently. Oh, 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 oh. A lot came off on that, and this too. Boom. This one's pretty good. over here we're going to get rid of and voila and here okay not touching not touching good and then we'll look oh yeah 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 this has to be cleaned off gently when you're working with multiple pieces you kind of got to be careful I know I've bumped into one piece while working on another piece and that's never fun. What's up Buffy? That's Buffy. She's eight or nine year old, we're not sure, I'm not sure. Toy Yorkie, she weighs all of two pounds and she's a deer. She's a good girl. Okay. Now, how about this one over here? Well, we're gonna scoot you over and get you on. Here we go. Boom. Yeah. Just like that. Ah, uh, let's see. Boy, this one is just really the big old hair there. Glad I did. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and get this one scraped off again because it just keeps on coming. Now it's time to, I said it was going to go away, but by the time I did that, it's time to torch again. So here we go. And there's a problem already. Hello. Come here. You are being bad. I need you to have some act right. Thank you.
First time that's ever happened. Oh, goodness gracious. I did mention the level, I hope. Because epoxy is self-leveling, you want to make sure that you are level. Come on. Thank you. Boom. And I believe it's almost time for us to say, Arrivederci. Sayonara. Or just like we say around here in Western Carolina, North Carolina, see you in a little bit. All right. I'll be back in the next couple days to show you the finished product. Until then, be well and color your day glad, guys.